Well, welcome back to Monkey Wrench Engineering. Uh, this is going to be an extremely short video. Um, we're starting an RSS uh, real solar system career. And I've had a couple of people tell me they're having difficulty getting into orbit in real solar system. Uh, not a surprise. In real solar system, you are flying on the Earth. It is 10 times the size of Kerbin. And instead of needing 3,000 and change delta V to get into orbit, you actually need something on the order of 9,000 plus change. Um, that being the case, I thought I would real quickly just do a manual orbital shot um, so that people have a little better feel for the angle of attack and the process. I apologize for the microphone. The good microphone is dead, so temporarily we're on this. Um, this rocket is my standard rescue craft that's getting used to rescue stranded pilots. We do have a fairing, obviously, to cover the nasty bits up top. Uh, importantly, it has about 11,000 delta V. Uh, that's not a ton in RSS. I would frankly like to have a little more, but we're still early in career, and this is what we can field. So let's uh, go ahead and set up to take this into orbit. Um, we are potentially going to be rescuing a lost capsule that's in an equatorial orbit. And while I'm not going to do that in this video, uh, I will go ahead and set myself up so I can do it after I get done. So we will want to launch. Oops, I took that too far. We'll want to launch ahead of the capsule we're trying to encounter. So just for GPs. That is a good thing to do. And we're just going to go for a simple equatorial orbit. Uh, your thrust to weight ratios will remain the same in real solar system. I mean, you, you're going to want somewhere between 1.3 and probably a maximum of 1.5 or 1.7 on the launch pad. Um, RSS, real solar system, will require you to install a few other mods. Uh, most importantly, either Realism Overhaul or SMURF, S-M-U-R-F-F. -F. Either one of those two tackles the issue of uh, the gear in Kerbal Space System being underpowered and built for a one-tenth scale planet. It increases your engine power, and it reduces the weight of many components to their real-world counterparts. Uh, both of those do that. I tend to use Smurf as it only changes the configs and it does not have a lot of dependencies. Realism Overhaul is also a very good mod. Um, it includes many dependencies, including things like Ferrum Aerospace, um, Real Heat, Real Plume, uh, Deadly Reentry on the right. And there are many dependencies within it, so I tend to go with Smurf because it just looks at changing the math on the parts. Um, in either case, you will want to add some parts packs in real solar system, um, most notably Necrobones, Space Y, and Space Y Extended Heavy Lifters, and his real booster series. Uh, there are many different parts packs that have real world equivalents, and I encourage you to uh, examine those. Um, and you'll also need your, your stock usual mods, uh, Kerbal Engineer. And, oh, speaking of which, we do not, for some reason, have Kerbal Engineer on this crap, so we're going to be flying this blind. Well, that was clever. Let's actually go back to the VAB and... <laughs> That's not going back to that. Let's go back to the VAB real quickly and fix that. Um, but, yeah, Kerbal Engineer, you'll want to have... You'll want to... Uh, you may want to have Mech Jub, um, especially in later game. Real scale launches are... Once you have them down to a fine art, they do become somewhat tedious because it's actually a fairly long job getting to orbit. Can't believe we can slap a wherever. There we go. Let's try that again without that particular issue. But yeah, much nicer. We have Kerbal Engineer. Hurrah! Oh, and we no longer have our ship where we need it to be. But you will want, as I said, Kerbal Engineer. You'll probably want Precise Node. Um, you may very well want MechJump 2 as well uh, for a lot of its, not so much its auto landing and its auto takeoffs, but a lot of its uh, 
basic node capability. So off we go. Welcome to Real Solar System. And even though we could probably play with getting a little better intercept, we're going to go into an equatorial orbit, and I will deal with that after the video. So we're currently going straight up. We've just passed 100 meters per second. I will already start my gravity turn here. The rule of thumb is that you want to be somewhere around a 45 degree inclination between 20 and 30 kilometers, depending on the rocket. And in RSS, you're going to want to try to make sure that your uh, time to apoapsis and you're reaching the apoapsis you want for your orbit are as close as possible to minimize waste fuel and gravity losses. So we're passing 11,000 meters getting some mock effects around the uh, craft, although that's dropping off as we get to 15. SRBs are down. We are now on our skipper main engine. We're at 20 kilometers, so I have already screwed up my turn thumb, but that's fine. Let's get turned. Apple is 45,000 meters. In real solar system, the atmosphere ends at 150,000 meters. So it's 150 kilometers up to get to a uh, stable orbit. That being the case, we are still obviously very low in the atmosphere at 35,000, but gravity turns are much more like they are in the real world. They start early. You spend the bulk of your time flying sideways trying to reach orbital velocity. Our apoapsis is at 76, 77,000. We're over 50,000 in altitude, so there's not much air up here now. Apoapsis 94, getting there. You'll notice we're just going over tick by tick. Apoapsis 100k, 102k, 102 still pitching down, showing a time to apoapsis of a minute 26 and holding steady, so I'm pitching down at about the rate of my acceleration. We're going to want to get that down. And it's dropping slowly now. 1 minute 24 and slowly dropping. I'll let you leave the city, it will start to rise again. We're downrange a fair number of miles. Apoapsis 130 and rising. Our actual altitude is 107. Our surface speed, let's go to orbit. Orbital speed showing at 3,300 meters per second. Pitching down a little more because we're time to apoapsis was starting to lengthen. Shooting our apoapsis height now is above 150. It's just clicking past 160. So we can start Moves down a little more and start getting a little closer to our time to apoapsis, which is at two minutes and rising. However, we're now on the smaller engine. Jensen, the initial launch stage. Got a little terrier here. It is losing time to apoapsis pretty rapidly. And we're going to watch that. We're going to leave this on a steady, steady path here. And when it gets under a minute, we're going to adjust our pitch so that we don't plummet back into the atmosphere. We are still gaining some apoapsis height slowly. Not too bad. Realistically, we could probably pitch down a tiny bit. 
which will do actually more or less flying level now. Apoapsis is still sneaking up slowly. Our timed apoapsis is coming down. We're actually going to pitch a little below the line. Let gravity help us a little bit. Our periapsis height is the other number we're watching. It is still 3,400 kilometers inside the Earth on the other side, so we're nowhere near orbit velocity yet, and we've just passed 6,200 meters per second. So speeds and distances in RSS are much larger than you're used to in stock KSP. Our apoapsis, however, is going up higher than I really want it to. Our periapsis height is still 2,700 kilometers inside the planet. We're going to keep the nose pitch down a little bit, let gravity help us. I was trying desperately here not to go over 200 kilometers altitude for this orbit. We'll see how that works. Passing 7 kilometers per second. Time to apoapsis just about a minute now. Our periapsis, 1,400 meters. 1400 kilometers and dropping pretty rapidly so we're getting we're getting closer to an orbital speed here and as a matter of fact we are suddenly you'll notice our time to apoapsis is jumping way out okay we're not in an actual orbit we're in a almost orbit. Our periapsis is still too low, but we're going to go ahead and grab the apoapsis and crank the I-209 is flying this a little more than I meant, but that's okay. Oh, why am I not using precise node for this? Because I'm a silly person. There we go. So with precise node giving us a burn of two seconds and seven minutes, we'll go ahead and line up on our maneuver marker as per usual. We'll go ahead and cheat and just do warp to next maneuver. Still drops us out early. And we'll sneak up on the node. And that should have us, that has us in a relatively circular 203, that's actually a very circular, 203 kilometer orbit of the Earth which is a nice safe orbit. We're not exactly in the same plane as the craft we need to rescue, and we may or may not have enough delta V to rescue him and alter that, uh, but we'll find that out on my own time. But that hopefully will show you in a general sort of way the basics of getting to orbit in RSS. Um, you're not going to do a lot of stop and start burning. It's a continuous burn carefully controlling your apoapsis and your time to apoapsis and keeping an eye on your periapsis as you're doing it. Basically one solid burn all the way up. Uh, usually one very small circular circularization burn once you've actually reached um, what's effectively a decaying orbit. Your apoapsis will be set. Your periapsis will be above the surface on the far side of the Earth. But anyway, that's enough yammering. Um, hopefully that's of help to you in getting to space in RSS. Uh, do stick with it. It is a lot harder than getting to space around Kerbal. 
um, but it is quite satisfying. And once you've done it, you'll discover you can do things like go to the moon. And uh, the sense of accomplishment is pretty pretty great. Um, so but that's all today from, uh, from Mike and Monkey Wrench Engineering. Uh, fly safe and don't crash too much. Thanks much. Bye-bye.